מנחם ויזנברג, שלום. שלום. And welcome to Culture Buzz. מנחם, you are a composer, an arranger, a pianist, and an educator. That's true. Which means, when it comes to Israeli musicians, not only that you are very varied in your uh, fields of interest, from classical to jazz, from Chava Alberstein to the Philharmonic, from piano to the wood, you are also one of the most busiest Israeli musicians. How do you do all that? Oh, I mean, I don't do, do uh, everything at once, as you can uh, imagine. Uh, what you've listed is something that uh, uh, somehow summarizes all my abilities, but doesn't mean that I do everything, you know, at, all at once. So, I used but, to... But it will be safe to assume that you are some kind of a renaissance man. It's not for me to say that, I mean, if you, if you want to, I mean, it's, it's very flattering, of course, uh, uh, for me. Uh, but, uh, I mean, every time, every, every, every epoch, I mean, I, I concentrate on something else. I mean, I do other things, but still there is always a focus. So uh, in the last years, I, I more focused uh, on my creative work as a, as a composer and uh, on uh, educating, teaching at, at the academy uh, and also at the, at the Jerusalem Music Center where I advise and I uh, do many, many things with most uh, talented Israeli young musicians aged 14 to 18. So, uh, in the last years, I, I, I don't play as much as I used to. I perform, of course, uh, here and there, uh, especially classical uh, chamber music, uh, not jazz anymore, even though it might come back. Somehow I feel that, uh, that uh, my life goes in circles, so I might do something in the future, who knows. Um, and I, I improvise, especially when I play with, uh, with the Sir Elias, my, my Arabic friend for whom I wrote the pieces uh, for Oud, and the piano, and other uh, combinations. And there, in, in every piece of this, I always have a part that, that's supposed to be improvised. So there I improvise. But basically, as I say, in the last 10 years, I, 15 years maybe, I concentrate much more on composing, sometimes arranging, and, and teaching, educating. And my, my, my pianism is a little bit in the background, even though that's my mother tongue. I mean, I, I play piano since I, I was four years old, and I always feel that I'm a performer, even though if sometimes I don't have enough time to practice it or, or to perform as I, as I would like to. Once a pianist, always a pianist. Exactly. It's exactly what I feel. It's very, very true for me. Menachem, it's very clear when one examines uh, the list of all your wonderful compositions throughout the, year, throughout the years that you have a weakness when it comes to uh, combining different musical uh, languages. Uh, one can call it fusion, one can be, can be even daring enough to call it confusion. I will give two examples. One is your concerto for mandolin and orchestra, and the other one will be another concerto for wood and orchestra. Can you tell us where does it come from? Yeah. So, uh, I was fortunate enough to, to be born to a, a father who was a, a musician. Uh, he was a klezmer. But uh, the word klezmer, uh, the way he used it, is not what, what the usual uh, uh, meaning is. Uh, for him, a klezmer is a full-rounded musician, a natural musician, not somebody who plays uh, I mean, in the style of, of uh, Hasidic music or Yiddish. But for him, uh, when, he, when he had someone, doesn't matter, it can, it can be just uh, a musician, a classical or, or whatever style, he would say, ah, in Yiddish, he said, Air is a musician. Uh -huh. Air is a klezmer. So for me, for me, uh, 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 
this idea of of, uh, of being a full rounded musician is something that I, I somehow uh, inherited from my father because my father played the clarinet, the saxophone, uh, and the violin, and on each instrument he played he played different styles. Wow! Yeah, so I, I, he played. Yeah, and he was he was a primitive musician in the sense that because of his. Uh, Life. I mean, you know, he, he was born in a in a Kleinstädtel, and he, at the age of ten, he had to support his, his family to, I mean, for to, to earn money. So he never had any any education, really. You know, he had just his his, his natural talent and his emotional intelligence, and musical intelligence, and and somehow uh, uh, he just managed to develop as a wonderful musician without studying. I mean, like me, like for 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 him. I mean, seeing me, you know, studying and going to that academy and so on and so forth was like like a, a dream, come dream. Come exactly, a dream come exactly. Come exactly. A dream come true, you know. I, but but I, I feel that I was really fortunate because he was such a natural musician. And at home, you know, you used to practice on uh, on each instrument for an hour or two. So on each on each instrument, uh, he used to play a different style. And many times he used to uh, ask me, even when I was 19 years old, Menachem, come to accompany me, you know? And, and, and I used to sit in the piano, and he told me, listen, you use your ears, you know, you're a musician. We have only one thing, uh, one rule that you, that, that, we, that you have to keep. A real musician never stops. Even if you get lost, whatever happens, you just follow, you just go on. I mean, nobody has to know. Improvise. Improvise. So it was, since I was really nine years, nine years old. So uh, uh, I was exposed to so many different styles. And I used to go with him. I mean, he used to play in the big band. He used to play in, in a symphonic orchestra. He used to play in, 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 in weddings, you know, Hasidic weddings. And he couldn't read notes? He could read notes. He, he taught could himself. read. Yes, he yes. taught himself. He taught himself. Yes, yes, yes. Now I'm mean, thinking back about him. You know, I. I mean, he died many, many years ago. But still, I, 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 want, I mean, it's unbelievable for me as, as a taught musician, you know, someone who is a learned musician, to, to, to. Uh, it's, it's astonishing how he taught himself. He was really a, a autodidact, as we say. Everything he taught himself somehow. Uh, so, so for me, as uh, going back to to answer your question, so. Uh, for me, I mean, since I was very young, I played classical music. I mean, this was I, I was I was I had a teacher who taught me the classical repertoire since I was I started with him. He was teaching me until I was six years old. Which and instrument? Piano. The piano. My, my instrument was always the piano. So my, your my, father was able also to play the piano. Yes, yes. He wasn't a pianist, so he taught me music, you know, because he didn't know really the technique. But then, since I was six years old, I you know I went to to, to professional piano, piano teacher. And, and, and so the piano was really my, my instrument, uh, and, and in the classical uh, heritage, the classical language was I mean, something that I was, it was very natural for me. But I always improvised, I always played by ear, I always played songs, you know. I remember that even when I, before going to, uh, in the kindergarten, they had a piano and I, 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 I played a tikva, you know, with all the harmonies and everything. The national anthem. I mean, our international anthem, yes, yes, you know, just by ear. So, so even though I studied, you know, to read music and so on and so forth, I always relied on my ear. And that's how my harmonic language uh, developed and, and my creativity uh, was developing, you know. So, uh, and then uh, now he loved big bands. So we used to listen to, to Voice of America. At this, we are talking about the 50s and early 60s, you know. Every night, even though I was young, it was just at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, it was just, you know, the voices that came from, from there, from, from the American Voice of America. So, uh, and, and going to the Philharmonic, I used to go with my piano teacher. So everything was all natural. At the same time, I, I listened to the radio to Israeli folk songs, or whatever was the, I mean, the, the Israeli uh, popular, popular music. music. Yeah. So, I mean, it was so natural for me that, that I, I, I was not thinking about it. I mean, everything was uh, uh, somehow... A wonderful um, fusion. Yeah, uh, yes. An amazing me, fusion. Yeah, yes. and and. and I never thought, I mean, that, that, it, that anything can interfere with, a, with another thing. I, I thought that it's, it's just enriching. I, I, I feel that, the, uh, uh, as, a, as a classical pianist, the fact that, that I was open to improvisation, to jazz harmony, and to analyzing jazz just, just helped me to be a better classical performer, and vice versa. Enriched you. It, you it, are it, enriched. Enriched, yes. It, it, I look at it as an enriching uh, experience. That's the way I look at it. Menachem, 
Uh, I read somewhere that you define yourself as an Israeli and a Jewish composer. Right. Can you explain? Yes. Um, I, start, I start from the Jewish because in, in, in a way uh, I think that first of all I'm Jewish and then I'm Israeli. Uh, so influenced by, by, by saying that I'm a Jewish composer means that that uh, in, in many of my pieces uh, I'm influenced by, by either by Jewish cantillation, by what we call Tamea Mikra, uh, the way we, uh, the Jews uh, chant uh, the Bible. Uh, and I'm very uh, proud of my Jewish uh, cultural tradition in, in, in many aspects. Uh, I use Yiddish songs, I use Ladino songs. Uh, so, uh, uh, in this sense, I, I feel that, that the Jewish tradition uh, somehow is very important uh, and, and it influences me, me even subconsciously because we say in Hebrew, I don't know how to translate it it's, uh, into English. Uh, it's, uh, your motherhood uh, 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 heritage or somehow. Right. Yes? So, uh, whatever I, I, I absorbed as a young uh, uh, child, listening to my father play play on the clarinet, Jewish music, I mean, the klezmer music, real klezmer music, of course, somehow it's in me. In English, there is a saying, it's in your genes. It's in my genes, that's definitely. So, so, so this is one, one part of my, of my uh, um, influence. Now, the other thing is being an Israeli means for me, again, something else. Uh, first of all, uh, my, my, my Hebrew language. So I, I, I think and I feel that, that the Hebrew language is very important for me, not only when I write a, a vocal music, of course then I use Hebrew, and, and as a matter of fact I started writing my first uh, uh, classical pieces were, were, were written for Israeli, uh, either for the Bible uh, um, or for uh, um, um, Israeli poetry, okay, I mean Hebrew poetry. Uh, but even more than this, I feel that, 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 that is the, the, the Hebrew language and, and its rhythms somehow uh, becomes part of my instrumental music. Uh, this is one part of me being Israeli and also I'm influenced by these old folk songs that we have in, that were written in the 20s and the 30s. Before there was Israel. Before there was Israel, yes. yes. So, so it also somehow it's, uh, uh, I incorporate some of it in some of my pieces. But this is only one side of being Israeli. For me, being Israeli means that I live in the Middle East. And being uh, in the Middle East, I am very attuned to the uh, musical sounds that engulf us, meaning the Arabic the, uh, uh, musical tradition, which I find very, very, very beautiful and very stimulating. Hence the mandolin concerto, hence, Not the, mandolin, but hence the, oud, the oud concerto. The oud concerto, exactly. Exactly, the, the, the old concerto, and, and I've written several pieces for the oud, not just the concerto, I have a concertino for piano and oud, trying to, 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 to mix this, the, the most, the prototype of the Western music uh, uh, um, instrument, the piano, and the prototype of the Arabic uh, music, which is the oud, and so on and so forth. So, so for me, uh, um, trying to incorporate these uh, beautiful sounds and and tradition of, of, the, of the Arabic music is something that I find a must for me, a must as an Israeli composer. And I also find many things in common between the way uh, the, the, Jewish cantillate, the, cantillate, the Jewish cantillation of the Bible and the Arabic way of, imp of, of uh, improvisation and, and the way Arabic look as the music. It's a little bit complicated to explain in such a, in such a, a, a way, but but for me, there is analogy in, in many aspects. So it's very natural for me. So the bottom line, when we normally say, or we refer to our neighbors as cousins, you can prove it musically. Yes, yes. I, I really find it very, very, uh, very much so. I wanted to ask uh, Menachem, I know that you are also very much interested in dance mm -hmm, yes. and choirs. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, okay, dance is very natural because I'm married to, uh, to Mimi, my wife, who who is a choreographer, and, uh, and we uh, cooperated uh, for many years in, 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 in many ways. Sometimes uh, she choreographed pieces to existing music of mine. Sometimes I wrote music for, for dancers that she created. 
And sometimes we worked really together. We, I mean, we, we built this music, uh, uh, dance music relation really step by step. And the marriage survived all that. Yes, and, and but isn't it true? <laughs> you know what, it's very interesting what did you say, because it took us almost 15, almost 15 to 20 years to decide really to work together. So it wasn't from the very beginning. You know, she, she of course, she, she was uh, consulting me in, in, in looking for music, for dancers and so on, but really working together, we felt we have to be ripe enough to, to do it, because you know, it's a lot of tension. Uh, you know, when two artists work, and you know, each one is a very strong personality. But anyway, yes, it survived. <laughs> and, 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 and concerning the choirs, uh, it's again something that, that I find very, it was very important for me when I started writing, because all my, all my uh, first pieces, I, as a classical composer, uh, which was quite late in my life, by, by the way. I mean, I started writing my, let's say, concert music uh, uh, pieces when I was 37 years, which is very, very old, old usually. Older than Mozart. <laughs> older than Mozart death. Okay, yes, yes. yes. But of course, I, I, I used to write a lot. So I, I started writing for the choir, for, not, not only choirs, but children choirs. Uh -huh. that, that, this was something that, that attracted me a lot, and that's how I, I started. We continue. Yes, it's fine. Well, that's part of the 21st it's the century. It's the nature of life. Yes. <laughs> we, we call this modern slavery. Yes, modern, it's really modern slavery. <laughs> Menachem, I wanted to ask you, you are a recipient mm -hmm. of numerous prizes and awards, both in Israel mm -hmm. and abroad. Mm -hmm. uh, your uh, compositions are being performed all over the world. Mm -hmm. And here comes the question that is basically unfair. When you look at the, all your compositions, when you look at all the prizes you were given, is there one or two you are particularly proud of? Yeah. Of course it's difficult, it's difficult to... Uh to single out. I apologize. So, yeah, 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 I know, yeah, yeah, okay. You do your job, you know, to put some hard questions, difficult questions. Yes. Um, I would say that there are, there are uh, two pieces that, that, that I love in particular. I mean, I love, of course, I love, I mean, they were all my sons. sons uh, and course. daughters. Yes, and daughters, of course. I, I mean, unfortunately, I have only sons, but, but of course, daughters too in this sense. Um, I feel that, that uh, a piece that I've written for Tabea Zimmerman, the, uh, viola, the, viola, the, viola one, the, the leading viola players in the world, man, really, which is called Mono Dialogue, is some, something that is very uh, dear to me, and I feel that, that uh, it's, I mean, I hope that it's a real contribution to the viola repertoire. Um, and another piece that, that I feel very close to uh, is, is my, my uh, piano trio for Oud Cello, and piano, which is a, a totally di different, because the, the, the viola piece is really, let's say, in a contemporary, what we call contemporary uh, a classical a, a language or idiom, and, and it has nothing to do with my, I mean, on the surface, it has nothing to do with my Jewish or Arabic influences. Of course, if you listen well, you, you find this, my Jewish heritage. If you dig deep. If you dig deep, definitely, but it's not on the surface, okay? And, and, the, and, and the wood piece, of course, it's, it's obvious. Yeah, I've written it, by the way, it's a lamento, and I wrote it as a, as a reaction, a late reaction to, to Rabin's uh, murder. So it's, it's, it's homage, yes, uh -huh. it's, yes. It, that's uh, what, so I wrote it's, it in, uh, in some, 1990. Some, some kind of a requiem. Yes, I call it lamento. Lamento means lamento. Uh, uh, um, um, lament, to lament, to, to mourn. To, to, to mourn the death. To mourn the death. The death. Yes, 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 uh, so, uh, of course, there are many, many other pieces that, that, I, that I love very much. And when it comes to prizes and awards, both, it's difficult both in Israel and abroad? In the world, yeah. It's difficult to say. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be able to... Uh, maybe, maybe in the, I mean, the prize that I've got recently from Akum, the last one, you know, somehow that, uh, that looks... I mean, that, that summarizes... Uh, what I've done until now, in a way, it's, uh, 
maybe in this sense I feel that it's, uh, it's very uh, dear to me. Because But we should tell our viewers that this is a very prestigious Israeli award normally given for your life work. Exactly, exactly. So, so uh, of course it is, I hope it's not, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't summarize all what I've did. It's it, the it, middle of the way, yes, the middle of the road. Yes, Ho hopefully. So, in it, in, but in this sense, I, I, I do feel that it's, it's a special, let's say a special moment for me somehow, looking back and trying to, I mean, because it was, it, it was given uh, to me really as a composer, but, but, but the, the judges, judges really looked at, at my other things. I mean, it's not only me, but me as a, as a, as a full-rounded musician, I think. Uh, I, I mean, the, the composition is the crowning thing, but basically they're really looking at me as, 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 a, as, a, as a musician. So in this sense, I feel very proud of, I mean, especially also the, the people who, uh, I mean, the, the jury people that are, are music, uh, composers, musicians that I like very much. So in this sense, I was very flattered to get it. What can we wish uh, Menachem Wiesenberg for the future? What are your plans? What oh, I, 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 those I, you can share with us? Right. Oh, I, I mean, in the last two years, I, I didn't write so much because I, uh, I felt that I have to to stop for a while and to, to reflect and, and just, and, and I, I felt that, that I shouldn't be pushed uh, uh, to write for, dead, for deadlines because in the last 25 years, I mean, everything was deadline, 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 and I wrote quite a lot. Uh, Talking about modern slavery. Exactly, exactly. And I was, I was just performing a lot, I mean, I, I, I had a very, very hectic life. So, I mean, I'm getting older a little bit, and I feel that, that things should be in a slower pace now. So, uh, but, uh, so after not writing for, for, for two years now, I have uh, several new commissions. And I've written a lot for the orchestras, and I've written many, many concerti. Now I feel that I should co uh, concentrate more on more intimate uh, mediums, meaning uh, um, chamber music or maybe a song cycle and all the, and, you know, things that I really love. And, Somehow, because I had commissions for the orchestras, I didn't uh, have enough time to write those pieces. So I have some commissions already, uh, very interesting ones for for, for different uh, for different combinations. Basically, what you are saying that you are working on several compositions at the same time. Not no, but it's it's not at the same time. But these are the commissions that, that I have in the coming two years. Okay. So I, I know I write it each at a time. Maybe sometimes I can work on two, but not more than two okay. at a time. And usually I also love to work in, in the summer breaks. So because because during the year when I when I when I teach, and especially when I have administrative tasks, as I you know as I, as you know now I'm the dean of composition uh, arranging and music education department at the academy. So it's not only teaching, but it's, 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 it's a lot of work. Of it's existence. demanding. Yes, yeah, very demanding, and it takes a lot of uh, uh, energy and mental uh, thinking. So I feel that, that, that if I really want to be true to myself, I have to wait either, either to the breaks between the semester or to the summer. Uh, so I have really, uh, I'm looking forward for the coming summer to write this new project that I have for really different combinations and for uh, most of them are uh, commissions by former students of mine who became uh, excellent performers hey, so, this, is, this, so is, it is, this is the ultimate compliment uh, to you as a teacher uh, yes and I'm sure it makes you also very proud of your students yes really it, it, it exactly what I feel which means you you did a very good job I don't know again I mean thank you <laughs> for your compliments it's not for me to say so but but anyway I, I, I really feel very privileged. I mean, writing for, for people, I mean, let's say, uh, Hela Levy, who is uh, one of the leading clientists in the world, in, 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 in Europe, I mean, the world. Absolutely. And there are many others, I mean, I don't, uh, well, it's, it's a list of, 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 of people. And also, I have something very interesting that uh, I just started working, started thinking about, uh, uh, trying to write something for a big band and two excellent uh, uh, Israeli jazz players, something that I've never done because I never mixed my jazz background into my classical. Of course, again, if you listen carefully, or if you did dig into my music, you can find those jazz influences. But, I ne but it was never straightforward. And, and now I have a, 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 some, someone approached me uh, uh, to write a, a double concerto. Yeah. 
for two leading Israeli jazz players. I don't want to mention the name, but really leading. We, ha we have a few. Yeah, yes, really. In this, uh, More yeah. than a few. Exactly, really leading, and, 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 and a big band. So for me, it will be something, it's going to be a, a new experience. Of course, I'm not going to write in the jazz uh, uh, language as it is, idiom, of course. It will be my own language, but when you use the big band somehow, and you use two jazz musicians anyway, you'll uh, somehow the language will have to relate to the to the heritage of the of the, of the band and of the players and they will be allowed to improvise of course i mean writing for this it was a rhetorical question oh, no, of course of course it's, it's like writing for the wood and not, not letting the wood player improvise i mean it's, it's against the nature of the thing menachem wiesenberg i want to thank you very much thank you this was really truly enlightening thank you and i want to wish you all the best Thank you and we can't wait for your next uh, compositions. Thank you. Toda raba. Toda.